you're very welcome back. Now, Lorna Byrne is best known for her best-selling memoir, Angels in My Hair, a Sunday Times and international bestseller. In her autobiography, Lorna tells the reader that she sees angels and that they are her constant companion. And this morning, she's here to take your questions. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, now, Lorna, I was just asking you there, um, when did you first know that you had a guardian angel? You said you'd never known any different. I have never known, known any different. And I, I suppose maybe that's why one of the most important messages is that everyone has a guardian angel. And I travel all around the world. And, and you see your guardian angel? Yes. Where just, people can't see, they might believe in it, but they can't see but, it but or they, they might people feel it. People sometimes would feel the presence or, or they, they certainly say that was something good that happened. I, I know I got a helping hand. Mm. They don't know where it came from, but it's your guardian angel giving you a helping and hand. Can you see everyone's at yes, all times? At all Do times. Do we have them? Of course you have. And right can there you see with them you. now? And I can see them, yes. And they are beautiful angels, extremely tall. But even when I go out onto the street or I'm sitting in a car and the car is stopped and I look out the window, the people passing by, I see the guardian angel with them. Now, does that become a bit of a burden, no, if you will? No, or does because, it freak you out? No, because it's normal. It's normal for you not to. See it? To see it. Does your angel have you know, a name? I'm not allowed to give my guardian angel's name. And, and sh like a lot of people, I know there's a lot of texts coming in would, yeah. and they've been asking, I'd love to know my guardian angel's name. So how do you know? And they, they don't then. Well, I, I believe they do. And the most common name is my guardian angel. Most people just call the guardian angel the guardian angel. OK. Um, but all as I would say to them is, you know, just ask. Oh, just, for the and, name. And just oh, ask okay. for the name. and. And whatever comes into your head, the first thing that comes in, use that. It may not be a name as a name you know it. It yeah. could be the name of a flower. It could be a colour. It could mm. be literally anything. Now, see, I, I sort of believe in this. And I sort of believe that people get great comfort yeah. and great strength yeah. from believing that they have got my guardian angels knocking the thing off me there. <laughs> uh, believe fully. Uh, believe, believe fully that they believe um, that they get great comfort and strength from um, believing that they have a guardian angel. But do you think there may be an over-reliance on it sometimes? Um, I don't think in the world today, I think it's something that's really, really needed. Um, because I meet so many people of, you know, all different nationalities and all ages, and especially the young are turning around to me and they're saying, it has made a huge difference to them to know that they have a guardian angel. It mm. has given them strength and comfort. It has given them belief in themselves, hope. And I think the world needs that. I think the young people need that. I think even the older need it. Yeah, because religion we have was to get... huge in this country. And yes. we're stepping away from it in many yeah. parts for the right reasons. Yeah. Some of the control the Catholic yes. had, Church had yes. and some of the issues that happened there. But that aside, people's faith really helped them through dark times in their life yeah. and even as a mum totally. I question yeah. not going to mass not having religion and what yeah. that will mean to them as an adult growing up spirituality and how important that is well spirituality is very important because you're not just a human being sitting there in front of me because I see your guardian angel you're a spiritual being as well you have a soul when you say you're seeing a guardian angel, are you sort of seeing an aura or are you actually seeing I'm an angel? I'm seeing a physical angel. A physical just, angel? Just like yourself. And, and I know in the future, a mother will turn to her child's guardian angel and say, I'm running upstairs or I'll be back in two minutes. I know in the future, everyone will be able to see their guardian angel. I, I know that. I know it's going to happen because so many things that... I have been shown that will happen in my life. I'd be in a terrible state of shock when they unfold, start to happen. But I never put a time limit on it. I never say, I know um, I'm going to write a book and mm. it's going to be a bestseller. Mm. I'll keep on rejecting it and not wanting to do it. Um, but then I will do it and then just see it on, unfold to me. That was incredible. You know, the angels telling me from the time I was quite small that I would write. And I'm dyslexic. Were your dyslexic. angels telling you then that you had to spread the word? 
Is that what yes. it was? Yes, I have to give these, these messages. And I never realized that there's so many messages in the books. I never realized it myself. And like, you're thinking of publishing something to do with children. You're focusing a lot of your work on children at the moment. Yes, because I think um, children need an awful lot of, of help. They need to learn about empathy again, you know, about love and compassion and, and hope. And because with children, we have so many suicides mm. and that shouldn't be happening. No, yeah. Like, you know, Lorna, it's, um, it's just so, so sad. Yeah, at, at such an innocent time yeah. in their lives. They shouldn't when we have mentioned yeah. yesterday that you were coming on the show, we got yeah. so many people um, texting us, writing into us or, or um, getting in touch with us. Um, here's our first viewer who wants to uh, ask you a question. Hi Lorna, my name is Aideen McLaughlin and I just have a question about our children and their guardian angels. Um, my little baby boy had open heart surgery um, a couple of months ago at four days old and throughout all of that time he was in ICU and the hospital. I prayed to his guardian angel and to some family members in heaven um, for his safe recovery and his return to me. And I firmly believe in the power of prayer and um, that, that it really helped his recovery. And I just wonder, are there other ways that we can connect with our children's guardian angels? Um, I know through reading your books uh, that you say that our guardian angels are all around us uh, and never leave us for one second. But are there other ways that we can connect? Thank you. I think um, you're connecting very, very well. And it is, in a sense, for a mother or a father or a sister or a brother just, just to say, please, I want Mary's guardian angel to intercede with God for the help I need them to, to recover. Again, it's, it's to have faith and prayer is extremely powerful. I don't think, some, sometimes we have, there's nothing else we can do, only pray. Yeah, and Aiden must have felt so helpless with and her four day old baby. she would have felt so, so helpless. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really in the end, no matter what the doctors were doing, it was again still in God's hands, you know, and for the child to recover. And I'm so glad that everything is so far successful and I will pray. And if she's already put it on the prayer scroll, I'm already getting it because I have a prayer scroll and thousands know, come in. I know when sort of things are going wrong or if I think, yeah. I, I always say, oh, and I'd say to my parents and my brother and sister who've passed on and stuff like that, I go, are you looking out for me? And Carl would do the same with his mom. I'd go, are you looking out for me? Don't let this happen. And then when it yeah. doesn't happen or everything works yeah. out well, I'd say to Carl, yeah. now they were watching over mm. us. And is that yeah. the type of thing that you, um, you get from people a lot, that they yeah, rely on that I, type of I, thing? I do, but I get as well, why do bad things happen? Yes, yes. especially why? when you've prayed. Yes, mm. when you have prayed and, and, and it hasn't happened. But bad things do happen hmm. um, and that is the hardest part for us to to lose someone or maybe not get the job we wanted like I have had a, a very special little friend who I've spent the last year with and I prayed so hard for God to grant the gift of life for him but it wasn't granted right and, and I could turn around and say, that's so sad and that's so bad. And why did that bad thing? Why didn't God? But when I look back and see the enjoyment for that extra year, that full of life and such faith, you know, um, of, of this young boy, to and me, what, that what was a miracle say then, Lorna, that, that, that he had that extra And then year. you have the power of prayer to turn back to rather than turning to bitterness and anger. Yeah, you don't have to turn to bitter, bitterness and anger. We have that free will. We have that choice. And your guardian angel, again, will never ask you to do anything wrong. So if you are being bitter or mean or, or you're doing something that's illegal, it's not your guardian angel your guardian angel would be giving you that little guilty feeling. You mm. shouldn't be doing that. But nowadays, in the world today, we've got very good at pushing that guilty Masking feeling that, away yeah. and making it so tiny that we ignore it. Yeah, okay. I'm Let's, conscious of yeah. trying to get in other yeah, people's that, questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I'm worried about my children. My daughter is very bitter over a broken relationship and my son has social anxiety, which has him almost housebound. They have both received therapy, which has helped. I wondered, is there any light at the end of the tunnel? What advice would you give? Well, one thing that I have found, and, and that is, I would say to, to the parent, get them to read the books, even the first book. And I'm hearing a lot from young people about a message of hope. They're finding that a great help with anxiety and, and all, all of that and fear. And the same with love from heaven, you know, because it's so important to love yourself. A lot of young people nowadays, because of bullying and different kinds of things and anxiety, we were kind of in, in a sense saying to them, you know, get over it, but you can't just get over it. You need help, but you need the proper help. You need the understanding. I had a young 15, 16 year old girl and I was talking with her and her parents were getting her all the help possible. And I said to her, would you, if your mom and dad is okay, would you like to come into my little office and we have a, a talk together? And I was shocked with what happened in between us. One of the things this young lady said was, I know I'm going to a psychologist and I'm getting all the help my parents are giving me, but I can't tell them what I'm going to tell you, Lorna. Why couldn't she? Because of the stigma of mental what was, health. What was going on mental health, right? And she told me things that I wish she had shared and I encouraged her to share with the psychologist and I asked her, can I have permission to talk to your mom and dad? You mm -hmm. know, would that help? Mm. And she only gave me permission, say, to talk about two or three things. Right. And and I did that, but I'm hoping to see her again in the summer. And it's hard as and parents she hasn't, not to barrel in. And, yes. You know, you yes. have a very soft approach, yes. and I think sometimes well, we forget she said, to do that. She said, um, I feel safe, yeah. and I know I can tell you anything, and I don't have to be ashamed. You have a lovely way you with know, you, yeah. may I say. Yeah. I'm just sitting yeah. here, and I feel so calm and good, so, good. like... Do you? Yes, and that's why that girl opened up to you. Yeah. Because yeah. of your approach and because of the energy that mm. you give out. There's just one, we're going, we're going to have to leave it here, but you are staying with us. And it was yeah. just one other, um, well, there's loads, I said, but one had asked, um, she wants to know her guardian angel's name, and you just said it. Ask. Just, just, ask. just ask, and it's the first thing, or whatever happens, even if you, suddenly the first thing is floor. For some reason. That's it. That's your guardian okay, angel's well, name. And it's only part of it. Mm. They won't give you the whole name. Yeah. We'll talk okay. again later in the programme. Thank you, As Lorna. we said, Let's thank go. you very much for the moment. Uh, Lorna is staying with us and we'll be back yeah. at half ten to answer more of your questions. We've so many to get through, but you can still aim, email us to irelandam at virginmedia.ie or WhatsApp them to 089 611 and after the break, we're going to be dissecting the new movies hitting cinemas this weekend, including a film that critics are calling Adam Sandler's best performance ever. Alan's not impressed. Don't go anywhere.